like to welcome all of you guys here. There's some people from Gonzaga. That's okay. It's sort of funny. It's just fun. It's okay. Uh, anyway, I said that I have a shot of that. By the way, interesting story before I begin. I got my vaccine shot. and vaccinated in that pool. And I got the first shot. And it was right in front of the altar at St. Aloysius. There was a chair. I looked down. Very place where I was vaccinated is where I lay prostrate seven years ago to become a priest. Isn't that powerful? You know, it's really interesting. In the last few months, we have quarantined and we have worn masks and we have done so many different things to get what right to avoid getting sick, which is all a good thing. Now, the big thing is to get vaccinated, to be vaccinated so that we will be able to go back to normal. But the question I want you guys to ask yourself is, what's the purpose of your life? Why are you here? You ever ask that question? What's my purpose? Well, so right now your purpose is you're in college and you're going to get a degree and then the purpose after that is your parents want you making your money to get out of the house. That's their purpose. How many of you have heard that? Can't wait till you, you start writing your own checks. You're like, and you'll probably hear that way too much. But anyway, they are probably doing it with great joys, writing checks and depositing money into your account. How many of you have called and say, Mom, Dad, I need money in the account? Can you call by? You all need to raise your hand because I know some of you have done that. Um, but the best part of this gospel, it says, for this purpose I have come. Yesterday, I witnessed a marriage of a young man who seven years ago, when I was up in eastern Washington, I was on campus, and the students are back in town, we're back on campus, I'm going to next fall. You'll see me on campus a lot, because that's where I like to be. And as I was on campus, I heard the Lord say something to me very specifically. Go back to the Newman Center and wait. I'm going to bring you something. Now, every so often I hear that internal sense, that sense of an audible voice. It was as audible as I've ever heard. And I said, well, okay. So I went back and I sat and I waited. And about an hour later, this young man walked to the door. And I said to myself, I thought, are you kidding him? This kid named Tuan Lee. Juan walks in. I've seen him maybe once or twice at the other parish I was at. This is at the center. Sort of a goofy kid, little guy, sort of cocky, sort of a brat, actually, only child. And he walked in. I said, Hey, Juan, what's up? And the Lord said, You're going to pour your, your life into this kid, and I'm going to use him. Because he doesn't know his purpose. I'm like, Of all people. Of course, I was sort of saying that. I said, okay, let's do it. I said, Tuan, how are you? I'm hungry. Of course you're hungry. You're in college. I said, oh, and what else is going on? He goes, I've got, uh, I don't feel good. I said, do you want some food? That'd be great, Father. Would you like some soup? That would be better, Father. I said, Tuan, do you want to hang out with me today? He goes, really? Can I hang out with you? So for the next about six hours, he and I hung out in this center. And he worked with me on the computer. And for the next three months, outside of him going back to his apartment, he lived in this place. And you have to understand this kid. He, he was a, a normal college student, only child, but he didn't know his purpose. And he lived his life out here to define what was in here. At this wedding, as he walked down, it was simply his groomsmen, the brides, Bridesmaids and her parents and his parents. That's it. In this little church up in St. Rose, and he's walking down. I reflected on the goodness of God to find this young man's purpose. Our purpose in life is not to exist, our purpose is not to live a mediocre life. Because you're all going to be successful one way or the other financially, I have no doubt. The purpose of your life is to give yourself away. And how are you giving yourself away now, 19 to 20-something? Yes, in many ways, 
College is set up because it is sort of all about you because you have to go to school. Understanding. But if you're founding your entire purpose on what you're going to do, you will come up short. Paul the Apostle, in this first reading from Corinthians, was very clear about one thing. Is that Paul lost his way, and then he got on Damascus, and Damascus helped him find the way. Why? Because he got knocked off his horse. See, this young man, Juan, and all his groomsmen, all got knocked off their horse because their life was centered on themselves and on sin. Upon themselves and upon sin. Paul the Apostle, 2,000, 1,600 years ago, whatever it was, life was focused on himself and his career. And yes, his career was to be a big churchman. But something knocked him off his horse. And the question I have is, if, if, if your purpose is this, what needs to happen to get you refocused on the right things? It's called, it's called purpose with meaning. Purpose with whatever you want a purpose driven life is to look at. I only really believe, and what I want to encourage you to understand, is that Paul the Apostle's purpose, after he was knocked off his horse, was to dive into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because for the first year of my relationship with Juan, he was an absolute brat. Happy, loved to be the center of attention, and bit by bit, God began to break him down, and instead of it being Juan focused, he became an other focus. And he ended up being on focus. And still is as a great missionary. What kind of man and what kind of woman do you want to lay your foundation? Here is this young man and all these other hundreds that I've worked with over the years, much like Paul, who finally said this, all this I do for the sake of what? Not my career, not for my bank account, but for the gospel. The gospel means good news. How many of you I've ever experienced someone coming up to you and talking to you about God. They're like, that might be sort of weird and awkward, like, and you don't know them, but maybe you felt right. Maybe you're here and you were invited here and it feels right. See, each and every one of you have the capacity to evangelize. This is only a building. The reality is, this is really a field hospital, isn't it? Because for a short time in your life, you can come here and get healed through the power of the Eucharist, through prayer, through community. But if you're isolating yourself with a phone, with images, with behaviors, and things in your life that will only bring you down, you will never find your purpose. See, Jesus Christ in the Gospel was what? He was exhausted. He's healing and he's casting out demons. But you've been so tired and you're like, just don't ask me to do something. Just, just don't ask me. I just want to go to bed. Wait. And when I get like that, I get whitey's and you know what God does? I get like a 1 a.m. phone call. Hi, is this Father Paul? Yeah. Hey, Father, I understand you'll bail guys out of jail. Will you come down and get me? I'm like, are you kidding me? How'd you get my number? Oh, doesn't, don't you know all of Eastern Washington has it? Because they said that you get up one in the morning and nail us out. I'm like, great. Can't wait. But I'm like, put our own clothes. I think, and the dad in me is like, I'm going to kill the kid. But then I got there, of course, they all fall apart. Like, we're sorry. But sometimes we're so tired. And sometimes maybe. God wants to use you in the life of someone who's hurting so bad. I want you to think about three people in your life who are in depression right now. I want you to think of the next person who might be addicted to something right now. And I want you to think about that person who, on the outside, everything is good. It could be an athlete. It could be a person pursuing a degree. Everything is in line. But the deeper question, if you ask them, what is your purpose in life? Would they be able to answer? What I want to instill in you guys today is one thing. Your purpose in life is twofold. Number one is to love God with your whole heart, mind,
mind and soul. And for some of you, it might be called to be a missionary. For some of you, it might be, I got to turn away from a lifestyle that is not of God. It might mean saying, I need to sell out and to love your neighbor. Who are those people you call and say, hey, you want to go to church with me? You want to come to Damascus tonight, today, at 3 o'clock, we're going to have a Super Bowl party? You can come to that. But to fill your purpose and your driven, and everything that God has given you is not about what you're going to do, but it's about who you Juan Lee walked in my center, a boy. But he walked down the aisle yesterday at 1 o'clock a man because he knew who he was in Christ and he knew who he was for others. When you know those two things, there's nothing that's going to stop you in life, even in the midst of struggle, even in the midst of hardship. Your purpose in life is not what you do. Your purpose in life is to love God best of your ability and love your neighbor. And what is it? As yourself. You have an opportunity this, this year, the next few years, to really get to know yourself. The question I propose to you is what's your purpose? And are you willing to go here or there to find it? I fundamentally believe that all our purpose is rooted in the person of Jesus Christ and his church. It's rooted in the Holy Eucharist. Let us not forget you are loved, you are enough, and that God's plans for you is not in the future, but they are this very